Alrighty then, it's time for a very special Jarvan game, and I'll explain why it's special in a little sec. Which one? Thing is, I hadn't played League of Legends for a while, and this game was totally off stream. Thing is, I had been getting sick on and off with either breathing issues or just congestion, and I got frustrated, so I took some of my medicine, and I got high. This game was played when I was a little bit in a different kind of cloud, right? It's off stream, it's on my main account, it's totally kind of private. And I just got really bored and I wanted to play a game of League. So I am totally not in the best mindset. Either way, I wanted to play Jarvan as a sort of assassin thing. I saw the enemy team and I, aside from Scion, they were pretty smushed. So I thought maybe I'd kill them. So runes and masters are attack damage red, attack damage queens, cooldown reduction blues, armor yellow, and uh, well actually 9210 mastery is just a defensive mastery. It's just so I wouldn't die to the, only, to the enemy tank that I'd maybe be able to fight them off. Anyway, Kha'Zix jumps to me. I kind of just wait for my teammates because you can see that they were coming closer. I could have run away if I wanted to, but I thought maybe I'd be able to survive long enough for them to show up and kill them. I did, and they ended up being able to kill Kha'Zix and then Scion, so it's a good trade for my team. And I also, I didn't give out first blood, so it's even better. Now, you might be wondering why this is called Anchor. This has Anchor in the title and why it's called Cooldown Reduction Jarvan. The thing is, I may have started off with the intentions of building warrior and going all, you know, damagey and everything, but halfway through, well, not even halfway, somewhat in the, into this game, I start getting all sorts of lightheaded, and it's kind of amusing. However, though, my teammates are also doing really well, and the fact that they saved me, or at least it, uh, responded to the aggro from the Kazakhs early on, showed me that I can at least count on them to be paying attention. And if you don't remember... Anchor is something I dubbed for any teammate you feel you can trust enough that they'll be able to carry you. So you build yourself either more supporty or you go more defensive or you hold back on a full carry status. So I'm still building offensive because I still haven't truly decided if I want to rely on my teammates too much. But there's going to be one point in here that I just completely fuck up that uh, makes me... Well, want to believe that. Here, I'm just kind of wailing at the Scion. He's a massive dick. Throughout the entire game, talking smack in all chat and then insulting his teammates. But look, I have my ultimate. I'm waiting for the Scion. And I don't even know. In most cases, I would think this is a big waste of time and I'm not able to farm. However, my Tristana did kill the Kha'Zix, so I was thinking to myself, Oh, it doesn't matter what I do. Kha'Zix is already losing. So I actually sit here for a good minute and a half doing absolutely nothing. And we only achieved taking out his flash. So that was kind of a big waste of time. However, as you, as you know, you can see that Tristana has three kills, BF Sword. So I'm starting to think, all right, even if I fail, even if I lose, then Tristana will do, so will, do, will do well by us, right? Um, and that's what makes an anchor. Like, if I'm losing, I can build myself supporty or whatever and, make, and, and fall back on the Tristana. That's what I do. Because this is the biggest miscommunication you'll see in this game. I want to gank Scion, and then the Echo just leaves because... Fuck me, right? And I end up being against the Scion by myself, and Kha'Zix is about to show up to try to gank me. I hold on to my EQ as long as possible just to avoid them, and then probably bait this because I knew Kha'Zix was going to chase after me. I ult him within tower range and flash over, and then I stab him, and for whatever reason, he gets close enough to get shot by the tower. So that's a... It's not a free kill, but it's a kill I shouldn't have gotten. So I survived... Not only did I survive, but I came out ahead on that one. That was just kind of... Uh, gutsy thing now you can see though that i'm buying the bammy cinder which is going to the cinder hulk as i haven't been doing too impressive in the early game and honestly i am starting to you know see lights in my face also scion just killed echo after he dc'd i decided fuck it i'm gonna go tank jarvan cooldown reductions in fact i'm gonna ad, ad hoc build my still i'm still gonna be building my brutalizer for the cooldown reduction and then i'm gonna be building uh, Glacier Shroud, and I'm not even going to be finishing that. I'm actually going to build Locket of the Iron Solari. Watch this. This was all actually on purpose. But though I end up screwing up the end, I try to ga get him to come close to me so I can trap him with the ultimate the same way I trap Kha'Zix and make sure that Ka uh, Echo would be able to, you know, kill him. So I could sort of reset the lane. If Echo were to obtain a kill there, not only would he get the bounty gold, but he would get a huge boost of experience of killing someone higher level than him. So, to, so I can go focus on other lanes. Fortunately, I was going to gank bottom lane. And just as I was going bottom, Fizz decided to be super aggro. So we catch him and we kill him. And we swing this game around even further. So yeah. 
with the whole you know anchoring you like i said it's okay for you to sacrifice your own life as long as you do one for one or one for two trades if i set it up to keep my opponent my teammates alive or at least get a, a worthwhile kill totally worth it if i die in exchange for scion or ezreal or fizz or even kha'zix even though he's kind of behind it's totally worth it and there's also one thing to note here the enemy team while they do have quite a bit of kills though we have more they're all allocated onto the scion so if i'm able to with my cooldown reduction constantly peel for my teammates or at least uh, control the scion in some way we'll be able to pretty much be fight we'll be pretty much be able to actually by the way this flash is totally stupid Either way, as I was saying, if I'm able to control the Scion, he might as well have zero kills. I'm not worth. Uh, I'm not a target worth killing, right? And like, here's what I mean actually by the trade-off. If I can keep getting this Tristana fed, it's all worth it. I actually EQ back in, even though I'm certain I was gonna die, just so Tristana can get another kill. I didn't even notice that the Echo was coming in. So Echo tries his best to chase the Thresh, nothing comes of it. However, of course, he's got his ultimate, so he's not going to get killed. And Tristana's able to irk out yet another kill. So Tristana's huge. And and thus, I mean, we're going to be able just to rely on her. All the, the entire game now is going to revolve around me and Janna making sure Tristana has a good time. Either I set up kills for her, or we protect her, or whatever. Uh, you can see the Scion, he's building pure tanks, so he's not going to be able to do shit. As long as he's controlled by either me or the Janna, he's not going to be able to do absolutely anything. My team has a lot of peel, and the Katarina's got a lot of damage, even if she doesn't have the most kills, although she does have three. So my team is ra rather well off right now. Unfortunately, I think the Tristana gets murdered right there. Yeah, you see, she got killed. I miss my EQ here against the Scion, and they, I, I yell at myself, like, fuck... And still, he didn't accomplish anything of it. Even then, if he had hit Katarina, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have been able to get any kill. The enemy team comes towards blue because they have warded. And I fuck up my EQ combo here. If I hadn't, it might have been a, such an extreme valuable kill. I think Thre yeah, Thresh is actually going to be able to flash out from my... Actually, no, he dies. It's Fizz who escapes. He actually traps himself by using his Q and he forces himself to use his flash. So it ended up having more value than I initially thought. But if I had not fucked up my EQ, we would have, uh, would have wiped the floor with them. I failed my Q here, which would have actually had killed the Ezreal. Enemy Scion, I believe, comes barreling down. I mean, no, he actually teleports in. But they, don't, they managed to get nothing in return from this. So we're making a lot of really... We're making positive traits, but we're fucking up a lot. The enemy team is honestly kind of uh, all over the place, right? They sh uh they're making tons of mistakes and we're able to capitalize on them and they're kind of engaging too much on the Tr Tristana without actually being able to snub her out. Like, look, the, the Scion comes in, he gets really, really aggro here. Like, Tristana uh, avoids him, Scion flashes over. We don't, don't actually kill him, which is the sad part. He's going to actually escape this. So, yeah, it sucks. By the way, I actually like that Jarvan's sort of making a return in the LCS because, honestly, he's one of the best champions in the game. I like, at least most versatile, so he can always fit some sort of niche or some sort of thing composition. And you'll see, once assassins start coming back into the meta, he'll likely come back into the meta too. Because he he can either be full-on offense to sort of equal a semi-assassin and play the part of the murder role alongside champions like Talon or whatever, or be a tank, full-on tank, cooldown reduction, aura tank, or just fat HP tank and just EQ into the enemy team constantly whenever the assassins need a need a setup, right? I've explained it before, what makes him really strong is that he doesn't have to rely on an ultimate to initiate. His EQ is spammable enough and uh, reliable enough that he can constantly keep using it to, uh, towards a fight. Like here, I, that's, this is my second EQ. I bounce the Scion away from my teammates. He's now sort of being kited. I'm going to have my EQ again right now. In fact, I do have it up, but I'm just waiting for the opportune time to use it. I actually believe I fuck it up. It's just this weird thing with uh, with Jarvan. If you uh, turn around too quickly with the EQ, it sort of fucks it up. But either way, if I hadn't fucked it up, that would have been the third one. I flash over, my EQ's back up, but I don't need to use it because my teammates just tore the enemy team up. But that's the benefit of having the cooldown reduction on the Jarvan. Just keep EQing all day. And it can be used for engage, escape, or uh, some form of peeling, although I don't exactly think it's the best kind of peeling. So, yeah. Like, he's gonna see play again, guaranteed. At least, well, actually, 
if I'm give, I'm saying guaranteed, it can't even just be my opinion. He will return to the LCS with uh, with more prominence once the the assassins start rolling back in. Right now, we're seeing some kind of magey compositions with a one fat dude in the front who sets everybody up and holds them together and allows them to murder. Anyway, EQ to Thresh, he gets murdered, F zeroes down bottom, he f he's gonna blink over, I just ch use my ultimate on him to finish him off, and we secure the dragon, then my team chases, and then I EQ back over the wall. I love it. Colon reduction, Jeremy, so you see I have about a, a perfect 40% right now, I have 5% in my in my runes, 10% Glacier Shroud, 10% from the, whatever that thing's called, the little red, I mean the little red circle, I forgot its name, uh, Cinder or something, no, whatever it's called. Uh, and then 10% uh, from the Brutalizer, and then 5% also from the Mastery, so a perfect 40%. My, I actually threw myself away right here. I threw myself at the enemy team, so my teammates can reposition themselves and hopefully survive. I was just expecting them to, to run, but the enemy team, as you can see, kind of fucks it up. And will allow Tristana to tear the enemy Fizz to pieces, and then kite the enemy Kha'Zix and Scion to pieces. Thresh gets m killed here, and I believe they managed to chase down the Kha'Zix and murder him too. And the Scion gets trapped, Kha'Zix gets killed by the Janna, and then the Scion gets killed, so... Yeah, I believe he dies. Yeah, he gets killed. So, in fact, we wipe out the entire enemy team. I don't I don't know if my, me dying really set this whole up, because I think the Janna's ultimate played a bigger part in that than my death, but I would say at least my death brought them some time. If one of us was going to die right there, one of us was going to get hit by Scion's ultimate, and it better be me rather than the Tristana or, hell, even the Janna. So, again, I mean, I'm like totally out of whack right now due to the medicines but at least i can understand that i my value as a champion is a lot less than my teammates so as you can see i've got the auras frozen heart would be overkill but i will still build it anyways just to deal with the enemy team and like i'm gonna take as much aggro from the enemy team or attract whatever I'm there i fuck up another eq i use my ultimate on the fist just i thought we'd maybe be able to kill him before anything happens i fuck up my eq yet again which is again pretty embarrassing and then the enemy team sort of has a different kind of idea of what each of them want to do. Some of them engage, some of them disengage, but they burn all their abilities, so now they're even weaker. And they shouldn't fight us within this tiny little corner of hell or whatever. So Thresh gets picked off for basically free, Scion is already cowering away, Kha'Zix gets caught and murdered, and then the rest of the team is just going to fall right after. So, clean sweep. And with that, it's quite the easy victory. I know it's not the most bombastic uh, game, but it's one game where I wanted to showcase in one, one where I felt I couldn't carry, so I had to rely on my teammates. So hooray!